now let's continue to the first tutorial that we are going to have for the electrostatic simulations and the first tutorial is going to be about a, a quadrupole um, mass spectrometer um, this is basically a, a, a disk that is uh, rotating very fast and uh, you can basically see what, what the materials on the disk will be uh, charged with some charges and then we have four rods that will apply some electric fields underneath and because of these four rods and based on the, the particles that are on the disks the mass of the particles the trajectories of the particles when they are like getting rapidly uh, uh, rotated will be different and based on that difference in the trajectories you can basically say what kind of a materials was on the top of the disk so now in this simulations we are going to uh, basically have a small disk uh, four rods and one a vacuum box to just get the better resol resolutions and this is by the way one of the ANSYS application um, uh, basically examples that I'm using here to uh, explain to you uh, how the, the electrostatic simulation is working and um, and we can go forward for um, further um, uh, lines so first and foremost we have to uh, apply insert a Maxwell 3D design and make sure that in the Maxwell 3D solution types we are selecting electrostatic. One other note is when you go to the modeler and switch to the units, you want to make sure that the units for this tutorial is set to millimeters. Okay, and that is just to get the same exact result as what we are showing here in this tutorial. Next thing is you have to select the material to be um, aluminium. So um, I, I realize that when you uh, make this uh, uh, basically window slightly smaller, um, the materials are actually uh, not showing because it's just going under like some weird uh, place. So I'm just bringing the materials down here so you guys can see it and uh, I'm going to use probably like some of these uh, tools over here or there and uh, probably I need to uh, readjust the window in order to get some of these tools but hopefully it should be okay for the rest of this tutorial okay so first of all selecting the materials and uh, we, we will go with the aluminiums everything is going to be in uh, aluminium and and uh, we just uh, select the aluminium and it will be there for our uh, designs first and foremost we want to make the um, the, the rods that are going to apply a huge electric field into the disk that is rotating. So we have four rods. We will create one rod and then the, we will copy the, the rest. So um, simple like that. We just go with the draw and a rectangular, uh, uh, basically a regular polygon is one of those things that we are going to use. And uh, we just put the numbers here. For the x value, we put minus 10. For the y, we put minus 10 and for the Z is zero. I suggest you guys to actually go through these numbers and actually do these things because um, I, I believe that if you do a one time, uh, with uh, it will take not that much of time to do this, but if you do that, you will basically learn a lot uh, by applying exactly what I'm telling you. Uh, DX is four, DY is zero, and DZ is 20, by the way. And um, we, we press uh, enter. The number of uh, segments can be set to be 12 and uh, we create our main box. So now, because I've done some uh, uh, changes in the options, we have this pop-up windows right away opening. You can just double click on the on this uh, icon and then you can get this pop-up window again open. Uh, get back to the tutorials in, uh, in the chapter one and you can basically see how you can change the options to get this pop-up window automatically open. And um, you can call this one, for example, the rod one, and uh, you can give it some uh, color. Let's say uh, some distinguished color that can be uh, that can be used later on to know which one is positive and which one is negative voltage. And uh, and actually, we can call it rod in that case. And uh, fair enough. And or sorry, it can be rod one and rod two and rod three and uh, the colors and everything is fine. I'm gonna press OK and the rod is created. You can't see the rod here, but because it's too much zoomed, now you can be able to see it. Okay, so now what you wanna do is you wanna go and duplicate the rods. Select the rod and uh, 
use the you can all either go to the edit and use the duplicate sorry duplicate along an axis and uh, and then you can basically say the axis is going to be 0 z uh, 90 degree for the angles and the number of the total duplication is going to be 4 and you can see a preview nice preview of what we have press ok and you will be able to see the rest um, I'm going to press ok here to basically see what happening here uh, so we have a four rods like this I'm going to make this one a bit larger so you can see what exactly we are dealing with and uh, so we have rod 1, underline 1, so that's not a very good name. We can call it rod perhaps 2. Uh, okay. Um, I think I changed the name to rod 2, but it didn't take it that well. Uh, oh yeah, so that was rod 2, this is rod 3, and this is rod 4. Okay, and uh, you can change the colors. Um, so let's say the rod four is going to be sort of blue, okay, and then the rod uh, two is also going to be sort of like blue color. Let's go there and make it blue. There we go. So now we have two blues and two reds. Perfect. And uh, what else we want to do? We want to uh, create the rotating disk on top of that which is very simple so uh, we basically use the rectangular here and we put the, the numbers of uh, basically 0, uh, 4, 24 by the way if you're designing that you don't need these numbers to be exactly the same basically you come up with your design and you know what exactly these numbers should be and uh, that is going to be 2 for the DZ uh, please look at the bottom right to to see how I'm importing these numbers and pressing OK for that. Yeah, sometimes uh, we have to make sure that we are on a right uh, plane. So the plane has to be YZ so it understands how to, uh, to work with this. Again, I'm going to enter X0, Y4, the other one 24 and the DZ is going to be 2. 20 and the dx is 0. That gives us the, the disk. Uh, we can call this actually disk, uh, although it doesn't look like a disk, but it's gonna be like a disk very soon. So I'm gonna make it like a disk uh, soon. So while this um, disk sheet is selected, we can now uh, either right click on it, like simple like that, and go on edit. Oh, you guys cannot see it. So let's do this. Right click on it and go on edit and then go on um, sweep and then you can go around axes and the axis is going to be Z for sure and uh, 360 round and the number of segments you can put whatever numbers if you put zero it will be a true curve but uh, that's not good for meshing so let's go with the 36 seg segment which is good enough and there we go you got your disk that fast and easy as I said working with Maxwell uh, design uh, modeling design tools is very very simple and it's very intuitive um, now let's uh, create a box here in the middle of that to uh, both um, make a higher density of the mesh uh, where we can have more resolution for seeing the basically the fields. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I don't have the tools for um, panning around and stuff. So I'm going to use the shift key to pan a bit. And so um, the box is going to be vacuum so we go and select vacuum over here to be our material and we use the box and put the numbers uh, to be uh, minus 2 for the X minus 2 for the Y Z is gonna have a 0 for us and then pressing enter will give us the DZ of 30 and uh, DY of basically 4 and dx of 4 as well. 
so that will create a beautiful box in the middle and uh, we can call this guy uh, the high high res box so this box is nothing unless for use for the high resolution because it's the same um, material as the region that are, we are doing the simulations which is vacuum so basically it's a dummy box we are using it just to increase the resolution of the meshing within the box and that is how you can focus the mesh uh, engine to um, increase the mesh quality in some areas in your design okay uh, it does not look very uh, good at this angle maybe if we change the angle we should be able to see a better results no it's not good so it should be in the middle I think I did some mistake in the numbers that I put um, this should be minus 2 for the initial X which I put 2 so that makes it be not exactly in the middle so let's just double check again if everything is okay yeah the box looks like that is going right in the middle and we have it like this that's perfect um, one other thing that we can do is we can select everything and uh, change the transparency to almost uh, zero or opaque so we can actually see what we are doing instead of being always in transparent mode okay so that's cool and uh, last is we have to dis define a region here and the region is going to be <coughs> the the it's going to be a, po a, a polygon again uh, and in this case we are putting um, um, 0 0 0 uh, for the for the center of the polygon and uh, we put uh, 30 for the DZ uh, for the DY we put 24 and for the DX we put 0 actually so that will gives us a very nice polygon and you can increase the number of um, basically segments to 36 uh, so that way, that way we have um, better resolution of what we have and also it's the same as the resolution of a disk that we had um, we call this guy region and it's going to be vacuum and I, I like that the transparency is actually not very high and uh, maybe we can make it to be like sort of white looking okay perfect so that's our um, our region now and this is basically the very first part of uh, designing of this I'm not gonna make it like too long so I will come back with another video to go through the excitations and the boundary conditions mm -hmm.